So, um, firstly, to start with, obviously, you've got your um, options down the side. And I'll kick off with um, what they're available, calling the cradle to grave reporting. This is your main screen for looking at your reports. So, you just select the date you want to look at. You can define it really specifically down here. You can select loads of different ones. Uh, whatever you look at regularly or if you look at an exceptional case you can save it as a filter if you like I'm just going to click execute and then that's going to go away and find the calls for that period and show them on here uh, one nice little feature is uh, for your agents if you upload their photo they show on here it makes it easier to see who we're referring to one other thing to see is that the recordings are not only if you've got call recording the call recording element um, set up as well um, not only does it indicate what's got call recordings attach, attached, but you can play the call recordings straight away from within um, this experience here. I'll show you a little bit about that later. What they're referring to as cradle to grave is they mean, I mean, it's a bit of a macabre <laughs> way of putting it, but they mean each call is shown from when it comes in to when it's dropped in each one of these drop downs. You don't have to go into a different screen you don't have to double click to get in you've got a summary of all your calls here it's easy to see so you can see um, calling party receiving party so that's my number the person who answered it call the name what group they're in start end duration and um, uh, a, signif a, a file name for the for the event um, I don't actually know what that is actually it looks like it's a date plus um, an instance number on the end um, and then obviously there's a visual indicator here to show you whether it's inbound or outbound but just in general this is really I find this really nicely put together and really easy obviously people in call center contact center environments they've got a lot of data they want to be jumping in and out you can very quickly just drill down to what you want to look at and then scan through the calls and quickly look at what's happened on the calls so to I'll take this one as an example this is the summary data at the top but this is where the call starts ringing into 8644 um, for a second and then it's picked up by the auto attendant presumably that's part of the programming rings for three seconds uh, and then the auto attendant plays for three seconds they must take an option because it's ringing for 10 seconds then it's in the queue for accounting for nearly three minutes that's not very good um, then it's uh, ringing for 16 seconds to an accounting group maybe some kind of overflow and then Jared Baker picks up this call and talks for 4 minutes 43 seconds before the call is dropped. So you can see at a glance quite easily what's happening on that call. And then if you wish to, you can listen to the call just by clicking. And it plays below. This is just a generic call. Um, so um, what I'll move on to now, I mean, uh, in the dashboard you can, there's a section for recording. Um, but if you click listen to recordings, it just opens this anyway. Uh, one feature, I like the fact that you can click play. It just opens the recording here. I will pause that so you can hear me. Just plays it straight away in the browser. Now here's a feature which I think is really useful. I've not seen before. You might be able to tell me, oh, well, this has been available for years on this system. Uh, it's not something I've come across. Playback speed you can increase the playback speed, put it up to two times. Now obviously if you're having to listen to a lot of calls or you've got agents with really long calls, 30 minutes long, you can cut that in half straight away and you can still hear what's happening. Listen. With a call recording module, you can listen to every call your IP office logs. Integrated with Chronicle's powerful... Maybe that's a little bit too fast. <laughs> so once you get used to it, I think like, a lot of people have this on their podcast players and they get used to it. Let's put it on one and a half times instead. And accessible like never before. With powerful tools Perfectly and capability, possible. you come to expect to from the protocol. The call recording module brings you save data you a lot of time. Longing to Just straight off the bat, a simple feature like that. Um, another feature that I like um, from a sort of data uh, compliance GDPR type um, uh, um, consideration is you can generate a, an external listen link. So if you're um, wanting to get someone else in the organization, um, to listen something, but you don't. What you don't want is for files to be pinging around everywhere, being stored locally, generating um, you know additional local copies that are then sort of out of your control from a data compliance point of view. 
the best practice for me would definitely be to generate a link and it also has an expiration date so say if you're um, one of the team managers has said oh, I, I had an issue with this call on Friday um, I'm going to listen to it tomorrow can you uh, send me a link you find the link you put it on a two-day validation copies the link to your clipboard you can send it to them um, and they can click that link and it'll open in the browser as long as they've got a login for them to listen to and I can't properly demonstrate that to you because it's just on the demo instance at the minute um, I've actually put a, um, a suggestion uh, into the uh, Avaya Zima development team that it should be configurable to what options are available here especially within Europe within the GDPR um, environment because what would be useful was to be able to allow supervisors to um, be able to generate an external link only so that they c can't even download even if they wanted to and uh, they've obviously kept this in because uh, I mean different people work in different ways it's useful for different environments but it'd be good to be able to keep that so we'll see um, how they respond to that in future but I thought there was a couple of cool little features there So another thing I wanted to show you was the agent timeline. Um, this is a really cool uh, feature that's really useful for supervisors just to see what is happening at any particular given time uh, in a way that's a bit difficult just through wall boards. Um, as you can see, you click into agent timeline and calls are progressing live in front of you and you can see um, from the graphics who isn't isn't available as you can see um, Alicia Ford is not in today um, Angelica Hammond is in the customer service and she's logged in but she's not on a call at the minute and then when a call comes in you get this green bar across the top uh, it shows you there that um, Brandon's been on a call for 3 minutes 43 and continuing with Jacqueline Gonzalez um, I just think it's a really useful way for supervisors um, to keep in touch with their teams, know what's happening, know who's in. And you, obviously, you could also do this remotely. So if if you're not in the office, if you're not with the team on a particular day, you can log in remotely and see what's happening. Um, and I think it really helps. Um, it's a really um, cool way to keep in contact with your with your teams. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the um, wallboard. Obviously, a lot of contact center environments use a wallboard. Uh, there's nothing particularly world beating um, about the wallboards, but what I would say is it's the interface for actually editing them and designing them and putting them together is way easier than quite a lot of other um, call reporting software out there. So I've just gone into the standard wallboard here. Um, you've got lots of standard stats. It's, it's only scrollable because I'm on a small monitor. Um, and that, that's showing the live stats from the demo. But it's dead easy to change anything. As you can see, when you click over things, frames pop up. Um, you can edit them out the way you wish. So let's change that logo. Um, you click, uh, find a new file. Open that. And apply it and there we go we've got one to call logo and to re reposition it just drag it around and um, then your options for anything new are all up here you've got different uh, bar chart pie chart different widgets you can add in text pictures it's all pretty um, self-explanatory but to give you an example uh, to get rid of I will get rid of this real-time values I've already got selected click it delete and it's gone so we'll put a bar chart in, click it once up there, click where you want it to go and then you've just got to define what you want in there. So we'll put a group, we'll have it as a line chart um, and we will have the sales group, we'll put that in there, you must define real time values, there we go, we haven't added any actual uh, data. <laughs> So we'll put call count. Now we can create that. 
obviously not many calls going in there. You can't see it very well, but all you need to do is edit it, and I suppose it probably needs a background. Background true. Let's put a uh, grey white background on that. And then you can see that, and again, just position it where you want. And then you can fill that up as you see fit. Absolute doddle compared to some of the offerings out there. Oh, there was one other thing that um, I wanted to show you as well, which is a really cool bit, a really cool um, feature that's built in to the surveyor call reporting software, which is the agent scoring system. And yet again, it's really simple. So go into recording, we go to score recordings, and I'll open this existing campaign just to show how it works. This has already got some parameters defined. So you open that up, the calls start playing. Again, I'll mute that off. You can listen to the call, and then you've got some questions you can define here. Click yes, do whatever it may be, submit that survey. That submits that survey. It's also dead easy to set up. So let's create a new campaign. Uh, we'll say, yeah, we'll look at a group and uh, we'll call it uh, sales assessment um, from the 3rd of September to the 7th of September. We'll select the sales group. Um, decide um, how many calls you're going to score. So let's say we're going to score 10% of their calls and then add your questions in here you've got three question type yes or no 1 to 10 text so we'll put yes or no was the call answered courteously if that's how it's spelt probably not but we'll go with that for now we'll add um, a 1 to 10 score the call overall and we'll have a text for good measure as well call that comments at the end then you just need to decide what exactly you're scoring people on so we'll say event type we'll say all call events click OK create that campaign and then you can yourself or other people on the team can go and uh, assess those calls. Yeah, we'll, we'll mute that so you can hear me. So ordinarily that call will be running and you'll be um, listening to the call you say yes answer courte courteously 7 out of 10 overall put a comment in here click score next submit survey the next one starts so you can really quickly build that up rattle through the calls and make sure your customers are being served as you would wish them to be served score the agents then give them the feedback and that's built into the system. So I think that's really useful and easily configurable um, part of a VAIR call reporting as well.